Yeah. Hi, team. Welcome to Cloud Pandit in this Microsoft Fabric Master Program. In today's session, we will talk about how to copy data from REST API to the lake house in Microsoft Fabric. Okay. So there are few steps we need to follow in order to achieve this. So step one, team, we need to make the source available. So source meaning our source is a REST API. So we need to make our REST API URL ready in order to make the REST API URL is ready to uh, get the user data as a response. We need to do total four things. One is we need to install the Postman tool, which is used to uh, send the request to the REST API, get the response and we can able to see the response. So this is mainly used in real time for the testing. So registration, so as we don't have any REST API, uh, which is developed by V, okay, we did not develop any REST API in real time also. We are not responsible for developing the REST API. So there is a separate development team for developing the REST API. So I want to use the online REST API. In order to use the online REST API, there are three things that I need to do again. First is I need to register for the online REST API. Then I need to log in into the login into the online rest api once i have done all these two uh, then finally i can use the url to get the user data with the help of the login credentials so let's quickly see all these steps once our source is ready then we will go and create a lake house then we will go and create the data pipeline so i am just uh, going to show you now so this is the place so you can see this is the rest api online url so in this if you can able to see a uh, so it will first ask us to register in order to register we need a postman tool so this is a postman tool so if you don't know how to install this it is very simple you can just go uh, go and say like a download postman here you can come here and you can say download download postman so you can just go to download postman come down so you need to just click on windows 64 if it is a windows operating system if at all any other operating system you need to choose the respective one okay so once you have just click next 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 you need to log in with your credentials uh, with your gmail once you log in you can just click on the workspaces okay so let's create our own workspace click create workspace so in this workspace i am just creating a blank workspace in this blank workspace i'll say this is for youtube underscore uh, testing okay or you can say youtube underscore video uh, just this is for my personal use just to click create so once we have done this so you can see your uh, plus mark to create a new request so as i mentioned first we have postman is installed and we also open the postman created the workspace the second step as per this the second step is we need to register okay now let me show you how to register is if you go here okay go to online rest api here uh, we need to registration right first we need to do the registration if you come down you can see so in order to register this is the url you need to okay request so take that particular url go to sorry take that url go to postman tool in the postman tool you can able to keep this url here and you can see the method the type of method is post post is a secure method as we are sending the credentials and all so we need to use a method called post if you see for this particular registration you need to say your name your email address and password you need to set up so let me go to the body here you can select raw under raw you can just select a json response here you need to put this particular body in this body what you need to do is you can say cloud pandit okay ms or cloud pandit iphone malaya so my name so i'll give my mail id cloud pandit 53 at the rate gmail.com so the password that i'm giving is cloud at the rate one two three two so i have given the my username like my name email address password okay to register with this particular online rest api just to send the request you can see i am sending the request now what happens when i send a request it is going to register what it is saying it is saying success so with these particular credentials i am successfully able to register it is saying so i also request all of you to 
copy the input that you have provided. This is the input for the registration. This is the output for the uh, registration. Okay, I'm just copying this. Okay, I'm just copying this also, and I am keeping here. Okay, this is the input. This is the output. What will happen if we have a registered, already registered email ID? If I provide and make a request for registration, it will tell you the email address I have entered is already registered. Okay. In case if you are using the same ID which you have used earlier, you'll get this kind of message. So now what happens? Registration also completed. Let's go and see how to log in. So in order to log in again, come here, come down. You can see this is the login URL. Just copy this login URL. Come here. Just click one more plus here because I don't want to disturb that one. Just to put this URL here in the new request. So in this, if you see again, method is post. So you can use the method is post. So here again, we need to pass a body in a raw and JSON format. But if you see, we don't need to pass the name. We need to just pass the email and the password. What is the email that I have given? So that's why I asked you to save it in the notepad. What is the input and outputs that you are giving? Cloud Pandit 53 is what I have given. So what I'll do, I'll just go and put cloud 53. What is the password I have given? Cloud at the rate one, two, three. Okay, now you can just send a request once again. So now this is very important tip. Copy this. Okay, and you can just say that this is the input and this is the output. So I'm just pasting the output. So what is the input that you have provided for this? So this is the input that I have provided tip. Okay, so this is for the registration. Registration. Okay, this is for the login. This is for the login. So this is for login. This is for registration team. So if you see something here, when you register, you got the token. When you are logging in, okay, that time also you got a token. So whatever token you got at the time of login that you need to use in order to get the user data. So let me show you the third and final steps to get the user data is again we need to go to the this you like the online register API link. Once you come down, you see calling register API with the authentication. So at the time of getting all user data, this is the URL. If you come down, you will see get all users. This URL you can take again. Click plus new here. Okay. So put this URL the method if you see I think method is get only you can see method is get only but what we need to pass for this is the authorization is barrier token authorization type is bar barrier token. So go to authorization here. You can say the type of authorization is barrier token. Then you can go to the headers here. You need to put your headers. What is your headers authorization is the header. Okay, the header key is authorization. Okay, what is the barrier? Just copy this barrier, put this particular barrier here, put this particular barrier here, give the space. So then you can just take this particular key, login key team, very important login token you need to take. Okay, login token I am taking, and you can able to put this here and send a request. So now you can able to see when you send a request. So all like some 10 user details we are getting. Okay, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So let me also copy these things here. Okay. Let me show you. So this is the data. Okay, we have. So what is the page? How many records we have per page? Total records, total pages. So all the actual users' data we have. So we also wanted to flatten this data. <coughs> Before we copy into the lake house. So at any uh, like finally we are ready with the source. Now what I wanted to do now the if you look at the steps. Okay, so make rest API URL ready for getting the user data. Yes, the URL is ready. Now second step is we need to create a lake house. Third step we need to create a data pipeline. Let me go and create the. These things go to fabric go to data factory. Go to workspaces, my workspace. Let's click on new, click on lake house. 
in this lake house i'll say cloud funde cloud funde sync lake house 001 and create it okay so lake house is ready so i don't want to create any folders if you want to create you can just create some folder called output folder to load the rest api response now go to my workspace once again click on this click here so now what we wanted to do we want to create a data pipeline so this is basically for pl for rest api data ingestion daily create it so once the pipeline is ready it is very simple for us okay so what we can do team now we can simply just uh, add the copy data activity to the can wash come here so it is very simple so source source is not a within a workspace it should be a external source system click new here you can type a rest okay select rest click continue so once you continue okay here we need to put the rest api urls and all okay so we need to put the rest url if you go to postman tool you can see this is the url that we have used to get the all user data copy this and put this here then so it is saying the existing connection is there but i don't want to use any of these existing connections i want to create a new connection okay so the new connection name is i'll say ls4 rest api uh, tutorials okay linked service for rest api tutorials so authentication is not anonymous it's a basic authentication we need to use what is our username cloud fund 53 at the red gmail.com we have used so password we have used is cloud at the red one two three we have used now click create so now connection is successful test the connection okay connection is successful so one more thing that we need to do is not just to connecting right so we also have to uh, come down and we need to use a additional headers here we need to add the headers so headers is just like this right you just have to use the key as a authorization and the value is barrier and token so whatever you have used that you need to put it here so once you kept it here now you just click on the preview data to see what is the result so this is the data that is coming up so now come to the destination in destination is same lake house so within the workspace this is the lake house within this lake house i have a folder under files i want to browse it and i want to choose a folder called output so choose the output folder so then you can just click ok under this if you want to just say that this is a rest api output dot csv file into this file i want to load the data so you can give the file now you can validate this you can see pipeline validation is not throwing any error now you can schedule this pipeline because we already discussed schedules you can simply turn on the schedule so it should be a daily schedule the daily at six o'clock 20 yeah 30 minutes you can run your pipeline so six o'clock 30 minutes we can run a pipeline start date is today and end date is end of this month and it is in the uh, ist time zone click apply Okay. so it just applied team it takes a few seconds to run now if you click on schedule it will tell you so the next run is uh, scheduled within a less than a minute let's wait for a seconds to see so let's close this now you can see the time is 6 30 so where we can see the pipeline runs is click on this go to monitoring hub in the monitoring hub you can see the pipeline started exactly at 6 30 a if you go inside this pipeline okay you will be able to see a activity called copy data activity i think i'm sorry so what we have done mistake is if you come back we have not saved this okay you must have to save this before you schedule it because if you have not saved this activity what will happen your pipeline will not take that particular activity now i saved it 
again i am running a pipe plan to run at uh, let's say one more time i am adding that is 631 okay then you can apply it so now what happens at 631 it is going to pick it once again uh, pick it up once again now come here let's wait for a second to see yeah now the time is 631 if you see at 631 pipeline started but if you go here what happens is you will be able to see the copy data activity so why copy data activity did not come up earlier in the previous run what happened i scheduled the pipeline here but this pipeline has added with the copy activity once you make any changes in the pipeline you must have to save it so you can see this is the save button right so you need to click on this to save if you have not saved those things those changes will not be reflected in your pipeline so i forgot to save that's where uh, we did not see earlier one but now if you go to monitoring hub at 631 okay this is the 631 pipeline if you go inside you should be able to see the copy data if you click on the copy data as you know for first item which has a 10 records 10 user data so all the 10 user data is already flattened now where we can able to see those things you can go to cloud pandit lakehouse you can go to output okay why the output is not showing you can just refresh it so the file you can able to see if you click on this so data is flattened it so but in azure data factory or synapse it is not this much straightforward the data is automatically it is understanding and flattening but in adf for synapse we need to take care of the parsing the collection element okay in the mapping tab but uh, uh, our fabric and able to handle all those things automatically okay i hope everybody understood so if anybody have any doubts or something please put your questions in the comment session and uh, i request all of you to subscribe my youtube channel and encourage me and support me too. okay thank you that's all for today okay so maybe status it is not updated but if you go inside you can see the copy activity at 631 if you see this pipeline is uh, uh, succeeded but there is no activity because i have not saved those activity changes okay thank you all that's all for today